Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary and today I'm going to show you how to crochet a penguin. As always, like all my tutorials, I will go over everything step by step with you and go over all the skills and stitches to make it as beginner friendly as possible. But because there is a lot to cover in a full plushy tutorial, I do also try to work at a decent pace to keep the video from going too long, so please feel free to speed up or slow down the video based on your level. If you do need more help with certain stitches, I do have some tutorials on some of the stitches that I'll link below. I'm using US terms in this video and I'll be using number 6 super bulky blanket yarn in blue, white, and yellow in a 6.5 millimeter hook, but you can replace this with a similar hook size for any yarn you want to use or have. Just make sure that if you're using a different yarn size that you also adjust your hook size accordingly to be smaller or larger to fit the yarn. Choosing hook size is very based on preference, but if you are crocheting plushies, it is recommended to size down from what is labeled on the yarn. You'll also need some stuffing, scissors, a yarn needle, and for the eyes, in this video, I'll be personally using 18mm safety eyes. You can definitely replace them though with something else and make them out of buttons, felt, even sew them on with yarn, or use a different size, whatever makes sense for you. I also definitely recommend a stitch marker, but if you don't have one, you can use anything that you can attach and detach from your stitches. And with that said, let's get started. We're going to start by making the body of our penguin, so grab the color that you want to use as a main color for your penguin, I'm using blue for mine, and we're going to make a magic circle. If you don't know how to make a magic circle, start by pinching the yarn between the thumb and the pointer finger of the hand that you don't usually use for crocheting, and then wrap the yarn across the pointer in the middle finger in an upwards direction, wrap it around the back, and then bring it back down the front, forming an X. Pinch that in place with the ring finger, and now grab your hook, have it facing upwards, and go in between the two fingers and go underneath the X. Turn the hook towards the middle finger, and grab that lower strand of yarn on top of the middle finger and pull underneath the X, exiting out the top. Turn your hook again and go over the X this time, going between the two strands of yarn on top of the middle finger and grab that lower strand of yarn again and pull for the loop on the hook. That is how you make a magic circle. If you do need more help with the magic circle, I do have a longer, more detailed tutorial that I'll link in the description. So if you did the magic circle correctly, you should be able to tighten it by pulling on this yarn tail, but don't tighten it up all the way right now since we still need to make our single crochets inside of it. We're making seven single crochets inside of the magic circle. To make a single crochet inside of the magic circle, start by inserting the hook through the circle. Make sure it's going underneath both strands of yarn on the magic circle. And then grab your working yarn and pull it through the circle. You should now have two loops on the hook. Grab the yarn again and pull it through the two loops on the hook. That's how you make a single crochet instead of a magic circle. So we're going to make six more for a total of seven. So insert your hook in again, grab the yarn, pull it through the circle, and then grab the yarn again and pull it through the two loops on the hook. That's our second single crochet, so let's make a third one. Grab the yarn, pull it for the circle, and then for the two loops on the hook, that's our third one. Insert your hook back into the circle, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, that's your fourth single crochet. Repeat this again, grab the yarn, pull it for the circle, and then for the two loops on the hook, that's five. Grab the yarn and pull it through the circle, and then for the two loops on the hook, that's six. Insert your hook back into the circle, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, and that's our final single crochet. Now we need to tighten our magic circle, so grab that yarn tail and pull on it to tighten up the circle. Now we're going to work on round two, but before we do that, grab your stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. If you're not too sure what that looks like, it's not the loop on the hook, but the stitch attached directly beneath it. A stitch looks like two strands of yarn running across the top or a V shape. So place your stitch marker into the stitch and pin it in place. The stitch marker is really helpful because it tells us when the last round ended. So for round two, we're making an increase in every single stitch all the way around for a total of 14 stitches. An increase is just two single crochets inside of the same stitch. So skip that knob in the front and insert your hook into the first stitch. Remember a stitch looks like two strands of yarn running across the top or a V shape. And to make a single crochet inside of a stitch, we're going to treat it like the magic circle. So insert your hook into that stitch going underneath both strands of yarn of the stitch. And now we're gonna grab the yarn and we're gonna pull it through the stitch, just like we did with the magic circle, but instead of pulling it for the magic circle, we're just pulling it for the stitch. Now we have two loops on the hook, so we're gonna grab the yarn again and pull it for the two loops on the hook. That's how you make a single crochet inside of a stitch. But since we're doing an increase, we need to do this again in the same exact stitch. So go into the same exact first stitch, 
grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook to make a second single crochet inside of the same first stitch. That's how you make an increase. So we're going to do this again in the second stitch. We're again making an increase. We're making two single crochets instead of that stitch. So insert your hook into it, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, and then back into the second stitch again, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. That's our second increase. So we're going to go into the third stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook to make our first single crochet, and then we're going to make a second one in the same stitch to make an increase. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. Same thing in the fourth stitch, we're going to make two single crochets to make an increase. So grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, and then going back into that same fourth stitch, we're going to grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook for an increase. Same thing in the fifth stitch, we're going to grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, and then the same fifth stitch again, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook to make an increase. Same thing in the sixth stitch, we're going to go into it, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on our hook for our first single crochet, and then back into the same stitch again, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then pull for the two loops on the hook for our second single crochet to make that increase. And now we're going to take off our stitch marker, and this marks the last increase that we're going to make. So we're going to go into that stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook to make our first single crochet, and then go into that same stitch again, we're going to grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook to make our second single crochet to make that final increase. We should now have 14 stitches total, so let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If you also have 14, then we can move on to round 3. Before we start on round 3, let's grab our stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. So remember a stitch looks like two strands of yarn running across the top or a V shape. So let's place that stitch marker there. And for round three, we're going to be doing one single crochet and one increase, and we're going to repeat this seven times for a total of 21 stitches. So going to that first stitch, we're just going to be making one single crochet. So insert your hook into the stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through the stitch, and then for the two loops on the hook. And now we're going to go straight into the second stitch, and this time we're making an increase in the second stitch. So we're making two single crochets in the stitch. So grab the yarn, pull it through the second stitch, and then for the two loops on the hook, and we'll repeat this again to make an increase and make our second single crochet instead of the second stitch. Now in the next stitch, we're just doing one single crochet again. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, and then in the next stitch, again, we're making an increase. So we're making two single crochets inside of this next stitch. So there's the first one. And then again, in the same stitch, we're going to make a second single crochet to make that increase. So we're going to keep repeating this. So again, in the first stitch, we're just making one single crochet. And then in the second stitch, we're making two single crochets to make an increase. And then in that first stitch, again, we're making one single crochet. And in the second stitch, again, we're making two single crochets to make an increase. In the first stitch, again, we're just making one single crochet. And then in that second stitch, again, we're making two single crochets instead of that stitch to make an increase. So there's one, and then again in the same stitch, our second one. Again, we're making one single crochet in the first stitch. And then again, we're making two single crochets in this next stitch to make an increase. And then one single crochet in this next stitch. And now we can move our stitch marker and we're going to make our final increase in this round. And we're going to make two single crochets inside of this stitch. That's our final increase. 
And now we should have 21 stitches total, so let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. If you also have 21 stitches too, that's perfect, and we can move on to round 4. So once again, let's grab our stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. And for round four, we're making two single crochets and one increase. And we're going to repeat this seven times for a total of 28 stitches. So going to that first stitch, we're just making one single crochet instead of that stitch. And then we're going to the second stitch. And again, we're just making one single crochet instead of that second stitch. In our third stitch, we're going to be doing an increase. So we're going to make two single crochets instead of that third stitch. And we're going to repeat this. So we're making one single crochet inside of that first stitch. One single crochet inside of the second stitch. And then we're making two single crochets inside of that third stitch to make an increase. Again, we're just making one single crochet instead of that first stitch. And then we're making one single crochet instead of that second stitch. And then we're making two single crochets instead of the next stitch for an increase. Once again, we're making one single crochet instead of this first stitch. One single crochet instead of the second stitch. And then we're making two single crochets instead of the third stitch to make an increase. Once again, we're making one single crochet inside of that first stitch, one single crochet inside of the second stitch, and then two single crochets inside of that third stitch for an increase. Again, one single crochet inside of that first stitch, one single crochet inside of that second stitch, and then two single crochets inside of that third stitch for an increase. Last time, one single crochet inside of the first stitch, one single crochet inside of that second stitch, and then let's remove that stitch marker, and we're going to make our final increase in this round, and make two single crochets inside of this stitch for an increase. And we should now have 28 stitches total, so let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So once again, we're going to place our stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made. And for round 5, we're just making one single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for a total of 28 stitches. So going to that first stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, we're just making one single crochet in that stitch as well. Same thing in the third stitch, we're just making one single crochet in that stitch. Same thing in the fourth stitch, we're just making one single crochet in the fourth stitch. Same thing in the fifth stitch, we're just making one single crochet in the fifth stitch. And we're just going to keep doing this for every single stitch, so one single crochet in that sixth stitch. One single crochet in that seventh stitch. And so on. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and finally let's remove that stitch marker and our 28th single crochet in this round should land in that 28th stitch. So again, we should have 28 stitches total. Once again, let's grab our stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. And for round six, we're making three single crochets and one increase, and we're gonna repeat this seven times for a total of 35 stitches. So going to that first stitch, we're gonna make one single crochet. In the second stitch, we're also making one single crochet. In the third stitch, we're making one single crochet. And then in that fourth stitch, we're making two single crochets to make an increase. Once again, we're making one single crochet in that first stitch, one single crochet in that second stitch, one single crochet in that third stitch, and then the fourth stitch, we're making two single crochets for an increase. Once again, we're making one single crochet in that first stitch. One single crochet in that second stitch. One single crochet in that third stitch. And then in that fourth stitch, we're making two single crochets to make an increase. Again, we're making one single crochet in that first stitch. One single crochet in the second stitch. One single crochet in that third stitch. And then we're making two single crochets in that fourth stitch to make an increase. Once again, we're making one single crochet in that first stitch, one single crochet in that second stitch, one single crochet in that third stitch, and then we're making our increase in that fourth stitch, so we're making two single crochets inside of that fourth stitch. One single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in that second stitch, one single crochet in the third stitch, and then we're making our increase, so we're gonna make two single crochets inside of that fourth stitch. We're almost done. So one single crochet in that first stitch, one single crochet in that second stitch, one single crochet in that third stitch, and then let's remove our stitch marker and we're gonna make our final increase in this round and make two single crochets inside of that fourth stitch. And we should now have 35 stitches total, so let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So we're gonna start using our belly color in round seven. So for me, that's a white color, so I grab my white yarn. And don't forget to add your stitch marker into the last stitch that you just made. To make things simpler to say, I'm just gonna talk about the color changes in terms of the colors that I'm using, which is blue for the main color and white for the belly. So if you're using something else, just change it to what you're using. So for round seven, we're making 14 single crochets in blue, two single crochets in white, three single crochets in blue, two single crochets in white, and 14 single crochets in blue for a total of 35 stitches. So starting in that first stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet, continuing with the main body color, which for me is blue. So there's our one single crochet in that first stitch. And then we're also making one single crochet in the second stitch, one single crochet in the third stitch, one single crochet in the fourth stitch, and so on until we reach 14. So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13. And then on the 14th stitch, we're going to do a color change in the next stitch. So we're only going to do half of the stitch. So pull the yarn through just like we normally do when we make our single crochet. And now we're on the two loops of the hook part. And for this part, instead of finishing off with the blue yarn, instead we're going to grab the white yarn or your belly color. And we're going to finish off with that white yarn. So grab that white yarn and pull for the two loops on the hook to finish our 14 single crochet. And this is what you would do in order to prep for changing color in the next stitch in the same round. So once the white yarn is pulled through, we need to secure that white yarn to the blue yarn. So we're just going to tie them together a few times. I usually tie it together three times just to make sure that it's secure. And now we're going to continue on into the next stitch just like normal. Instead now we're using our white yarn to make the next two single crochets. So we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to make one single crochet in the white yarn. And then we're going to go into the stitch after that and also make one single crochet in the next stitch. But again in this stitch we're going to be changing colors right after that into the blue yarn again. So again we're just going to complete half of that single crochet. Just pulling the yarn through once and have the two loops on the hook. And then we're going to grab our blue yarn and pull that for the two loops on the hook to finish off that single crochet. And then now we're going to make three single crochets with that blue yarn. So going into the next stitch we're just going to make one single crochet in that stitch. And then again one single crochet in the stitch after that. And then also one single crochet in that third stitch but again we're changing colors right after this one so we're only going to do half of the stitch in blue. And then we're going to grab our white yarn again and we're going to pull that through the two loops on the hook to finish off the single crochet. And then we're going to make two single crochets again in white. So in the next two stitches we're going to use our white. So going into that first stitch we're going to make one single crochet. And then we're also going to make one single crochet in the stitch after that. But again we're changing colors in the stitch after this. So we're going to finish off the single crochet with the blue yarn instead. So grab that blue yarn and pull for the two loops on the hook to finish off that single crochet. And then we're going to make 14 single crochets in blue. So we're just going to continue. We're going to make one single crochet in blue. One single crochet in the next stitch in blue. And continue on. One single crochet in the next stitch. One single crochet in the next stitch. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and finally let's move that stitch marker and the 14 single crochet of this part of this round should land inside of that stitch. So let's make one single crochet inside of that stitch. Again, you should have 35 stitches total. So once again, before we start on round eight, let's grab our stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. So for round eight, we're making 13 single crochets in blue, four single crochets in white, one single crochet in blue, four single crochets in white, and 13 single crochets in blue. So starting in that first stitch, we're just making one single crochet in blue, and then again in the second stitch, just one single crochet. Same thing in the third stitch, just one single crochet. Same thing in the fourth stitch, and so on until we reach 13. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 and then now we're on our 13th one but we're changing color in the next stitch so we're only going to do half of that stitch only pulling the yarn through once and then we're going to finish off with the white yarn to complete that single crochet make sure not to pull the white yarn too tight where it stretches up the piece you also don't want it to be too loose where the stitch can get pulled out it should be the same length as the back of your piece and now we're going to make four single crochets in white so starting in that first stitch we're going to make one single crochet And one single crochet again in the next stitch. One single crochet in the third stitch. 
And then finally, we're on our fourth single crochet in white, and again, we're changing colors in the next stitch. So we're only going to do half of that single crochet in the white, and then we're going to finish off by pulling the blue yarn for the two loops on the hook. And now we're only going to do one single crochet in blue. So again, since we're changing color in the next stitch, we're only going to pull the yarn through once, and then we're going to use the white to pull for the two loops on the hook. And again, we're making four single crochets in white. So we're going to make one single crochet in that first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, one single crochet in the third stitch. And then on the fourth stitch, we're changing colors again. So we're just going to pull the yarn through once. And then we're using the blue yarn to finish off that single crochet. But since the distance is getting quite far in between each of the color changes, I personally don't like to keep using this method. Instead, I'll cut it off. So I'll cut the blue yarn with my scissors. Make sure you leave a little bit of extra yarn when you cut the blue yarn off. I'm also going to cut the white yarn as well, and I'm also going to leave a little bit of extra so I can tie the two ends together. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie the two ends together just to secure both of the ends. Just like before, when you're tying together the two yarn ends, you definitely want to make sure that it's not too tight so it's not scrunching up your piece, but you also don't want it to be too loose where the stitches are loose. So you want it to be around the same length as the back of your piece. And then we're going to use that blue yarn to finish off that single crochet. And I'm also going to tie that blue yarn down as well to some of the strands that are left over inside of the piece, just to make sure that strand is secure. I know it looks like a huge mess inside of the penguin, but don't worry, no one's going to see it since it's on the inside of the plushie. Once that's done, I'm just going to make sure that everything is secure and everything is tied down well. And we're going to proceed by finishing off our 13 single crochets. So going into the next stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet. And then we're making one single crochet in the second stitch. One single crochet again in the third stitch. And so on. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12, and our 13 single crochet of this part of this round should land on the stitch with the stitch marker. You should still have 35 stitches total at the end of this round. So like always, before we start on the next round, let's place our stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made. And for this round, round 9, we're making 12 single crochets in blue, 11 single crochets in white, and 12 single crochets in blue. So going into that first stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, just one single crochet. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fourth stitch, one single crochet, and so on. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. 9, 10, 11, and then on our 12 single crochet, since we're changing colors the next stitch, we're just going to pull the yarn through once, and then when we have the two loops on the hook, we're going to finish that off with the white yarn instead. So pull the white yarn through the two loops on the hook to finish off that single crochet, and then we're going to secure the ends of the two yarns together, and we're going to tie the blue and the white yarn together. Tie it together a couple times just to make sure that it's extra secure. And then grab your scissors and cut off that excess blue yarn. And now we're going to continue working in the white and we're going to make 11 single crochets. So going into that first stitch, we're going to make one single crochet. One single crochet as well in the second stitch. One single crochet in the third stitch. One single crochet in the fourth stitch. And so on. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And since the eleven single crochet is our last single crochet in white, and we're changing color to the blue yarn, we're only going to do half of that stitch in the white, and then we're going to grab the blue yarn and pull it for the two loops on the hook. And just like we did earlier, we're going to secure the blue and the white yarn in place by tying them together.
Then grab your scissors and cut off the extra white yarn. And now we're going to do 12 single crochets in blue. So going into the next stitch, we're just going to do one single crochet in the blue. And then one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the third stitch, one single crochet in the fourth stitch, and so on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then let's remove that stitch marker. And our final single crochet, our 12 single crochet at this part, should land in that stitch. Again, you just still have 35 stitches total all the way around. So this is what your piece should look like now. As you can see, we're starting to form the face of our penguin. So for the next round, round 10, we're just going to do the exact same thing that we just did in round 9. So we're making 12 single crochets in blue, 11 single crochets in white, and 12 single crochets in blue. So exactly like what we just did. If you find it helpful to follow along with me, go ahead and rewind to the beginning of round 9 and repeat the same thing one more time. Otherwise, I'll see you at the end of round 10. Hi again, so this is what your piece should look like now after you finish that extra row. You should have 10 rows total, so counting from the very top, starting where that magic circle is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you also have 10 rows too, we can move on to round 11. So grab your stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that you made. And for round 11, we're making 12 single crochets in blue, 12 single crochets in white, 11 single crochets in blue for a total of 35 stitches. So going to that first stitch, we're going to make our first single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet again in the second stitch, one single crochet again in the third stitch, one single crochet again in the fourth stitch, and so on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and remember for the 12 single crochet we're only going to pull the yarn through once and then we're going to finish off that stitch with the white yarn since we're changing colors into that white yarn for the next few stitches so grab the white yarn and pull it for the two loops on the hook to finish off that single crochet then tie the two yarn ends together cut off the excess blue yarn and then we're going to make 12 single crochets in white so going into that first stitch, we're going to make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet in white. Same thing in the third stitch. And so on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12. And remember for the 12th one, we're going to be changing colors, so only pull the yarn through once, and then we're going to finish off that single crochet with our blue yarn. Pull the blue yarn for the two loops on the hook, and then tie the two ends of the yarns together. Cut off the excess white yarn, and then we're going to be making 11 single crochets in blue. So going into that first stitch, we're going to make one single crochet in blue. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet in blue. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fourth stitch, one single crochet, and so on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And finally, let's remove that stitch marker. And our 11 single crochet should land in that last stitch. Again, we should have 35 stitches total. So we're going to repeat exactly what we just did in round 11 in round 12 as well. So we're doing 12 single crochets in blue, 12 single crochets in white, and 11 single crochets in blue. Again, you should have 35 stitches total at the end of round 12. If you find it helpful to follow along with me, go ahead and rewind this video to the beginning of round 11 and just repeat this one more time. Otherwise, I'll meet you at the end of round 12. Welcome back again. So you should have just completed round 12. So if you also have 12 rounds too, that's perfect and we can move on to round 13. So grab your stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that you just made. And for round 13, we're making 12 single crochets in blue, 13 single crochets in white, 10 single crochets in blue, for a total of 35 stitches again. So going to that first stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, we're also making one single crochet. 
Same thing in the third stitch, we're just making one single crochet. Same thing in that fourth stitch, just one single crochet and continue on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then for our 12 single crochet, we're only gonna do half of it, so just pull the yarn through once, and then we're gonna finish off that stitch with our white yarn to change colors. So pull the white yarn for the two loops on the hook, and then tie the two yarn ends together. Grab your scissors and cut off the blue yarn, and then we're making 13 single crochets in white. So starting at that first stitch, we're just gonna make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet in white. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet in white, and so on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then for the 13th stitch, we're only going to do half of it in white, so pull the yarn through once. And then we're going to finish off by pulling the blue yarn for the two loops on the hook to finish off the single crochet and color change into blue. Tie the end of the blue yarn and the white yarn together. And then cut off the white yarn. Now we're going to make 10 single crochets in blue, so going into that first stitch, make one single crochet in blue. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet in blue. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet in blue, and so on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then let's remove that stitch marker, and our 10 single crochet of this part shall end in that last stitch. Again, you should have 35 stitches total at the end of this round. So this is what your piece should look like now. And again, we're going to be repeating the exact same thing that we just did in round 13 for round 14. So for round 14, again, we're making 12 single crochets in blue, 13 single crochets in white, and 10 single crochets in blue. If you find it helpful to follow along with me, go ahead and rewind to the beginning of round 13 and do this a second time. Otherwise, I'll see you at the end of round 14. So this is what your piece should now look like. You should have 14 rounds total. So let's count them starting from that magic circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. If you also have fourteen rounds total, that's perfect, and we can move on to round fifteen. So as always, place your stitch marker into the last stitch that you made. And for round fifteen, we're making thirteen single crochets in blue, eleven single crochets in white, and eleven single crochets in blue for thirty-five stitches total. So going into that first stitch, we're just gonna make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fourth stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fifth stitch, one single crochet. And so on. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. And since our 13 single crochet is the last stitch before the color change, we're only going to do half of it, so pull the yarn through once, and then we're going to grab our white yarn and finish off that single crochet with the white yarn by pulling it for the two loops on the hook. Tie the two yarns together. And then grab your scissors and cut off the blue yarn. Now we're going to be making 11 single crochets in white. So starting in that first stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fourth stitch, one single crochet. And so on. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, 
and 11. And since we're changing colors right after the 11th stitch, we're only going to pull the yarn through once with the white yarn, and then we're going to use our blue yarn to pull for the two loops on the hook to finish off that single crochet. Tie together your two yarns. Grab your scissors and cut off the white yarn. And now we're going to be making 11 single crochets in blue. So going into that first stitch, we're going to make one single crochet in blue. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet in blue. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fourth stitch, one single crochet, and so on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then let's remove that stitch marker. And we're going to make our last single crochet in that stitch. We should again have 35 stitches total in this round. As you can see, we're making the part that narrows down at the bottom of our belly, and we only have one row left to make up the belly. Once again, place your stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made, and for round 16, we're making 14 single crochets in blue, 9 single crochets in white, and 12 single crochets in blue for a total of 35 stitches again. This is our last round with the color changes. So going to that first stitch, make one single crochet. Same thing in the second stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet and so on, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then for our 14 single crochet, we're just going to pull the yarn through once with the blue, and then we're going to finish off with the white yarn to change color. So pull the white yarn for the two loops on the hook, and then tie them together to secure them in place. Then grab your scissors and cut off the excess yarn. Now we're going to make nine single crochets in white, so going into that first stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, same thing in the second stitch, same thing in the third stitch. And so on, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And since we're changing colors, we're only going to do half of that ninth stitch with the white. And then we're going to grab our blue yarn and pull for the two loops on the hook. And now we're going to tie the two yarns together. Cut off the white yarn, and we're going to finish off this round with 12 single crochets in blue. So going to that first stitch, we're going to make one single crochet. One single crochet in the second stitch. One single crochet in the third stitch. One single crochet in the fourth stitch. And so on. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and let's remove that stitch marker and make our final single crochet in that stitch. You should still have 35 stitches total all the way around, and this is what your piece should look like. In round 17, we're going to be making the tail of our penguin. There is a lot going on in round 17, so I'm splitting the instructions into a few parts. If you know what you're doing and I'm going too slow, I'll leave the pattern in the description for you. To make the tail, for the very first stitch, we're going to make a slip stitch in the front loop only, chain one, and then also make a double crochet in the front loop only of the same stitch. So the first thing to know about this is you know how each stitch has two strands of yarn running across the top? These are your loops, and usually we go underneath both loops or both strands of yarn. But to make our tail, we're only going to go for the front loop or that first strand of yarn. Insert your hook into the front loop only or halfway through the stitch. We're going to ignore the back loop or the second strand of yarn. And then we're going to make a slip stitch. So if you don't know how to do that, grab the yarn, pull it through the loop. Remember just the front loop only of the stitch. And now we have two loops on our hook just like the single crochet, but unlike the single crochet, we're not going to grab the yarn again and pull it for the two loops on the hook. Instead, we're just going to pull that first loop into the second loop and pull it all the way through. That's how you make a slip stitch. So now we're going to chain one 
To do that, just grab the yarn on your hook and pour for the loop on the hook. And then we're going to make a double crochet. If you don't know how to make a double crochet, start by wrapping the yarn around your hook. And then we're going to go into that same exact first stitch, but only the front loop only of that same first stitch where we put that slip stitch. And then we're going to grab the yarn, pull it through that front loop of that first stitch. And now we should have three loops on the hook. I'm trying to spread them out a little bit better so you can see it. And then we're going to grab the yarn and pull it through just the first two loops on the hook. Now we should have two loops left on the hook again, so we're going to grab the yarn and pull for those two loops on the hook. And that's all we're going to do in the first stitch. I know there's a lot of new things going on here, so please bear with me. And now for the second stitch, again, we're just going to work in the front loop only. So again, we're only going to insert our hook into that front loop only, or that first turn of yarn, and we're going to ignore the back loop, and we're going to make another double crochet. So wrap the yarn around your hook again, and we're going to go into that front loop only of the second stitch. Ignoring the back loop of the second stitch, so just the front loop only, and then grab the yarn, pull it through that front loop, and we should have three loops on our hook. Grab the yarn and pull it for the first two loops on the hook, and then grab the yarn again and pull it for the last two loops on the hook. And now we're going to chain one again, so grab the yarn, pull it for the loop on the hook, and we're going to finish off with a slip stitch again into the front loop only of the second stitch, so the same stitch that we just had a double crochet in. So go into that front loop only at the second stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then pull that first loop directly through the second loop on the hook. And we are done making the tail. So we need to finish the rest of round 17. And there's going to be one more new skill that we're going to learn here. But first, we're still going to go into that third stitch. And we're going to go for the full stitch, so both loops. Going underneath both strands of yarn, we're just going to make a single crochet in this stitch. So grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. And now we're going to make a decrease. A decrease is the opposite of an increase, and it crochets together two of the stitches. So I like to do the invisible decrease method, so that's what I'm going to show you. And to do that, we're going to go for the front loop only of the next stitch. It's the same thing that we did when we were making the tail, when we only went for that first strand of yarn with that front loop and ignore the back loop. So going through only half the stitch to that front loop only. And then we're also going to go into the front loop only of the next stitch as well. So we're going to the front loop only of two stitches. So now we have three loops on our hook and we're gonna grab our yarn and we're gonna pull it through the first two loops on the hook or the two front loops of those stitches. And now we're gonna grab our yarn again and pull for the two loops left on the hook. And that's how you make an invisible decrease. So for the rest of the round, we're making three single crochets and one invisible decrease and we're gonna repeat this six times. So going to the next stitch, we're just gonna make a single crochet just like normal. And then same thing in the second stitch, just a single crochet just like normal. Same thing in the third stitch, just a single crochet just like normal. And now we're making our invisible decrease, so going into the front loops only of the next two stitches. We're going to grab the yarn, pull it for those two front loops, and then for the two loops on the hook. And then we're going to repeat this pattern again, so one single crochet in the next stitch. I'm struggling a little bit here, so just ignore that. And then we're again, we're making one single crochet in the second stitch, one single crochet in the third stitch, and then again, we're making an invisible decrease, so going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. You should have one in the blue color, one in the white, and then grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. And then again, we're just making one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, one single crochet in the third stitch. And then again, we're making an invisible decrease, so going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. Grab the yarn, pull it through those two loops, and then for the two loops on the hook. Again, we're making one single crochet, one single crochet in the second stitch as well, one single crochet in the third stitch, and then again, we're making an invisible decrease in the fourth and fifth stitch. So going for the front loops only of the fourth and the fifth stitch. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. And then again, we're making one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, one single crochet in the third stitch. And once again, we're making an invisible decrease, so going to the front loops only of the next two stitches, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. 
and then once again we're making one single crochet in the next stitch one single crochet in the second stitch one single crochet in the third stitch and then we're on our final invisible decrease so let's remove that stitch marker and we're going to go for the front loops only the last two stitches grab the yarn puller for those front loops and then for the two loops on the hook and we did it we finished round 17. as always place your stitch marker into the last stitch that you just made for round 18, we're making two single crochets and one decrease, or I like to do the invisible decrease method, and we're going to repeat this seven times for a total of 21 stitches. So when we're making the first two single crochets of round 18, we're not going to work on top of the stitches that we made in round 17 to form that tail. Instead, we're going to go for the two back loops that we left behind when we made the tail. So remember in round 17, we only worked in the front loops only of the first two stitches, and now we're using the back loops of the same two stitches to place our first two single crochets of round 18. So insert your hook into that first back loop to make a single crochet. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook to make the first single crochet of this round. And then we're also going to make a single crochet in the second back loop that was left over when we made the tail. Doing this allows us to close up our piece while also having that extra part that sticks out of the penguin making the tail. So this is only for the first two stitches underneath the tail, and then for the rest of round 18 we're just going to work like normal on top of the stitches from round 17. So now we're going to make an invisible decrease going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. And then we're going to grab the yarn, pull for those two front loops, and then for the two loops on the hook. And then we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch, a single crochet in the stitch after that, and then another invisible decrease, so going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. And again, we're making a single crochet in the next stitch and a single crochet in the stitch after that. And then we're doing our invisible decrease, going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. Again, we're making a single crochet in the stitch after that and a single crochet in the stitch after that. And then we're making our invisible decrease, going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. And then one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet again in the stitch after that, and then we're making our invisible decrease again, going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. And then we're making a single crochet in the next stitch, a single crochet in the next stitch, and then invisible decrease, going for the front loops only of the next two stitches, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. A single crochet in the next stitch, a single crochet in the stitch after that, and then our final invisible decrease. So we're going to remove our stitch marker and we're going to go for the front loops only of the next two stitches. Grab the yarn pour for those two front loops and then for the two loops on the hook. And we should now have 21 stitches total. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. If you also have 21 stitches too, that's perfect. And we're going to take a break from crocheting and add our eyes, our beak, and stuffing. We're going to place our eyes between rounds 9 and 10 of the body. So we're going to count from the very top, starting from where that magic circle is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're going to place our eyes right underneath row 9 and right above row 10. And how I place my eyes is right in the middle of the triangle shape on both sides. As you can see, each eye is centered to each triangle on the penguin's face. Once you're happy with the placement, secure your eyes in place. I'm using safety eyes, so I'm attaching the backings. And now we're going to add our beak. So grab the yarn color that you want to use as the beak color for your penguin. I'm using yellow. And also grab your sewing needle. And we're going to sew from the inside of the penguin. We want the beak to be centered to the eyes. And I usually put it one row beneath the eyes, so between rounds 10 and 11. So I'm pushing the needle out around one stitch from the inner corner of the eye. If you're using a different eye size, you may want to adjust the placement. And then I'm going to reinsert the needle into the penguin around two stitches to the side. I like to make my beak around two stitches wide, but again, that is up to your preference how wide you want it to be. Pull the yarn through once, and then I'm going to loop the yarn around again a second time. And then I'm going to bring the yarn back one more time for a third layer of this yarn. How many layers you do is really up to you, how thick you want the beak to be. 
Like for this penguin, I think I only did two layers of yarn. So it really is up to you. And now I'm going to flip the penguin inside out and I'm going to cut off the excess yellow yarn and tie the two ends together to secure that yarn in place. Then flip the penguin back around and now we can start stuffing our penguin. So one tip I have for stuffing is just to use smaller chunks of stuffing. I know it's really tempting to use larger chunks to fill it up faster, but when you do that, it is really easy to overstuff the penguin and stretch out the stitches or cause it to become a lumpy shape. When you use smaller pieces, it's a lot easier to shape it to the actual shape of your plushie. So after you're done stuffing, we're going to finish the last two rounds. So make sure that the stuffing is not too high up where it's in the way of your crocheting. And grab your stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that you just made. For round 19, we're making one single crochet and one decrease. And we're going to repeat this seven times for a total of 14 stitches. So going into that first stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet. And then in the second stitch, we're going to make a decrease where I like to do the invisible decrease. So going for the front loops only of the next two stitches, grab the yarn, pull it through those two front loops, and then pull the yarn for the two loops on the hook. We're going to repeat this again, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then an invisible decrease going for the front loops only of the next two stitches, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, single crochet again, And then another invisible decrease going for the front loops only in the next two stitches. Single crochet again. And then another invisible decrease. Single crochet again in the next stitch. And then we're making an invisible decrease. Make a single crochet in the next stitch, and then another invisible decrease. Single crochet again in the next stitch, and then we're on our final invisible decrease. Let's remove that stitch marker, and we're going to make our final invisible decrease. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. If you also have 14 too, then we can move on to our final round. As always, add your stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made. And for round 20, we're going to be making 7 decreases or invisible decreases. So there might be some extra space since you added a few more rounds, so add any extra stuffing that you might need. And then we're going to make our final 7 invisible decreases, so going into the front loops only of the first 2 stitches. Grab the yarn, pull it through those loops, and then for the 2 loops on the hook. We're going to do this again, another invisible decrease. And then we're going to make a third invisible decrease. Our fourth invisible decrease. Our fifth one. Our sixth invisible decrease. And finally, let's remove that stitch marker and make our final invisible decrease for the body. Now we just need to fasten off, grab the yarn, pull it for the loop on the hook. So when you cut off the yarn, I would say leave quite a bit of extra yarn, at least a foot, probably more, because we need it to help close up our plushie. Now pull the yarn all the way through the loop, and then add any last bit of stuffing that you might need to fill up your plushie. When you're done stuffing, grab your yarn needle and thread the yarn through the needle. We're now going to sew close the opening on our piece. So I thread the needle going through each stitch, going inwards and then outwards. Do this all the way around the opening. And then pull tight to close up your plushie. Sometimes I find that I would like to add a few more stitches here and there just to neaten everything up. This is totally optional though. You don't have to do this if everything looks good. And then when you're ready to secure out the yarn, thread the needle through a nearby spot from where your yarn is coming out from. Leave some slack. Then put your needle through that slack and pull tight. And then for extra security, I like to knot the yarn several times. You want the knot to be big enough where it isn't easily pulled for the plushie, but you also don't want it to be too big where you can't even pull it for the plushie once. 
Once you're done, grab your needle again and thread the yarn for the needle. And then we're just going to pull the knot through the plushie so it gets hidden inside of it. Once it's pulled all the way through, grab that yarn that is sticking out, press down on your plushie, and cut off that excess yarn. Puff up the plushie and it should hide the yarn inside. And we are done with the body of our penguin! Now we need to make the flippers and the feet of our penguin. Starting with the flippers, grab the yarn color that you use as the main color for the penguin. And to make the flippers, again we're going to start with a magic circle. In case you don't remember how to do that, here's a quick recap. Start by pinching the yarn between the thumb and the pointer finger of your hand, then wrap the yarn around the pointer and the middle finger forming an X. Grab your hook, go underneath that X, grab that lower strand of yarn on top of the middle finger and pull it underneath the X, exiting out the top. Rotate your hook and this time go over the X and grab that lower strand of yarn again and pull it for the loop on the hook. Now we're going to make six single crochets instead of this magic ring. So remember to go underneath both strands of yarn when you're making your single crochets on the magic ring. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, that's one single crochet. And then grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, that's our second single crochet. There's our third single crochet. Our fourth single crochet. our fifth single crochet, and finally our sixth single crochet. Now grab the end of the yarn and pull tight to tighten up the magic circle. And now we're going to grab our stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. For round two, we're going to be making one single crochet and one increase, and we'll repeat this three times for a total of nine stitches. So skip that knob in the front and go into that first stitch and make one single crochet. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook, and then in the second stitch, we're going to make two single crochets for an increase. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for the two loops on the hook. And then we're making a second single crochet in that same second stitch. This makes our increase. So again, we're making one single crochet in the next stitch. And then in the stitch after that, we're making two single crochets again for an increase. There's our first single crochet, and then we're making a second single crochet in that stitch for an increase. Then we're making one single crochet in the next stitch. And finally, let's remove that stitch marker and we're going to make our final increase in this round and make two single crochets inside of that stitch. There's one and then a second one in the same stitch. So we should now have nine stitches total. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you also have nine stitches too, that's perfect. And we can move on to our final round, round three. So grab your stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. And for round three, we're making one single crochet and one decrease, and we'll repeat this three times for a total of six stitches. So going into that first stitch, we're just going to make one single crochet. And then we're going to make an invisible decrease. So going into the front loops only of the next two stitches. Grab the yarn, pull it for those two loops, and then for the two loops on the hook. And then we're making one single crochet in the next stitch. And then we're making our invisible decrease, so going for the front loops only of the next two stitches. Grab the yarn, pull it for those two loops, and then for the two loops on the hook. One more time, one single crochet, and then our final invisible decrease. Let's remove that stitch marker. And then we're going to make that invisible decrease. Pull the yarn for the two front loops. And then for the two loops on the hook. And we should have six stitches in this round. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to fasten off. So grab the yarn and pull it for the loop on the hook. And then we're going to cut the yarn. But make sure that you leave a lot of extra yarn for sewing the flipper onto the body and then pull the yarn all the way through. And that is how you make a flipper. So we do need to make two of these, so go ahead and rewind or pause the video and make a second flipper. Once you have two flippers done, we can make the feet. So grab the yarn that you want to use to make the feet. I'm using yellow, and again we're going to start with a magic circle. You do want to leave a little bit of extra yarn when you're making the magic circle. It just makes it a little bit easier to sew the feet onto the body later. Now wrap the yarn around the fingers, forming an X. Grab your hook, go underneath the X, 
Grab that lower strand of yarn and pull it underneath the X. Rotate your hook again. Go over the X and grab that lower strand of yarn again, this time coming from the top side, and pull it for the loop on the hook. And all we're doing for the feet is making six single crochets instead of a magic circle. So insert your hook into the circle, make sure you're going underneath both strands of yarn, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then for both loops on the hook. And then repeat this five more times. So make a second single crochet inside of the magic circle. Then make a third single crochet. Our fourth single crochet. Our fifth single crochet. And then finally the sixth single crochet. Now grab the end of the yarn and pull the circle tight. And then we're just going to fasten off. So grab the yarn, pull it for the loop on the hook. And just like before, make sure you leave some extra yarn so we can use it to sew our feet onto our penguin. Cut the yarn off and then pull the yarn all the way through. And that's it. That's how you make the feet. So repeat this a second time and make two feet total. Go ahead and pause or rewind the video to make a second one. So now you should have two flippers and two feet and we're on the very last part. We're going to assemble everything. So grab the body and we're going to start by sewing on our flippers to the body. So grab your yarn needle and we're going to attach our flippers between rounds 10 and 11 on each side of the penguin. So starting at the very top counting from that magic circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we're going to attach the flippers right underneath round 10 and right above round 11. So I placed my needle there just to mark it and we're going to thread that long yarn tail that we left over for sewing through that. And you do want the flippers to be attached where the white meets the blue, so I'm actually going to move my needle one stitch over to better match where the white meets the blue. Now push the needle for the penguin's body and we're going to exit one stitch over directly to the side. Pull the needle all the way through. And we're not going to stuff our flippers, we're just going to sew them on flat, so fold it in half just like that. And then push the needle through both sides of the flipper. Now we're going to re-enter to the same part that we just exited from on the body and again exit one stitch to the side. And now we're going to go for the flipper again going through both sides of the opening of the flipper. And then we're going to go for the same place that we exited out of on the body and move again one stitch over. Again go for the flipper. And then re-enter in the same spot that we exited out of in the body and move again one stitch over. Go for the flipper one last time. And pull tight. And then I usually have to go over it at least a second time just to make it extra secure. So I'm just going to work my way back down the other side. And then to make the flipper lie flatter to the penguin's body, sew down the second row of the flipper to the body as well. So I'm just going to re-enter the needle for a similar spot on the plushie, and I'm going to exit one row down on the body, and I'm just flipping the penguin around so y'all can see better. Pull the needle all the way through, and then we're going to go for the flipper, this time a row higher. Pull the needle through, and then we're just going to keep doing this, going for the body of the penguin, and then back for the flipper. And you can go even lower on the body as well to sew even more of the flipper down onto the body to make it even flatter. Once the flipper is secure and flat against the body, we can secure our yarn. So just like how we secured the yarn when we finished our body, we're just going to push the needle through a nearby spot, leaving a little bit of slack in the yarn. And then pull the needle through that slack and then pull tight. And then we're just going to knot it a few times just like we did when we finished the body. Once you're done with your knot, grab your needle and then use that needle to pull the knot through the body. And then once the knot is pulled all the way through, cut any excess yarn that you might have left sticking out of the plushie. So now you're just going to do the same exact thing to attach the other flipper onto the other side. Again, it should be sewed between rounds 10 and 11 and instead of starting on the other side, you're starting on this side where the white meets the blue. Now we're going to attach our feet. So thread the long tail that we left over for sewing through the needle. 
And we're going to attach our feet one row beneath where the blue and white meet. Or you can think of it as between rounds 17 and 18 of the body. We can count from the top starting from that magic circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So right below round 17 and before round 18. Sew the feet on horizontally starting from one stitch to the side of where the belly ends. So push in your needle exiting one stitch to the side and pull the yarn all the way through. And now we're going to push the yarn through the feet. And then we're going to go back into the same spot that we exited out of in the body and move one stitch over. Go back through the feet. And then back into the same spot that we exited out of in the body. And for some extra security, go back and forth a few more times just to make sure that the feet is attached securely to the plushie. Once you're ready to secure the yarn, I personally like to do this thing that I'm not really sure if anyone else does, but I basically bring the yarn to the same place as that yarn tail that's left over from the magic circle. And then I just take both strands of yarn and knot them around a few times until the knot is large enough. This is just a method that I feel like saves time and I feel like it also holds down the two strands of yarn pretty securely. And then I use a needle to pull the knot through the plushie. Once it's pulled all the way through, press down on the plushie and cut off the excess yarn. Then puff up your plushie to hide the remaining yarn. Now just attach the other feet in the same exact way but this time to the other side of the penguin. Congratulations, you have finished your penguin. Thank you for following along with me and let me know what you named your penguin in the comments. If you like this tutorial, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. I really do appreciate it so much and it helps me continue to make more videos like this for you. Until next time!